John over here. You just mentioned about being prepared to bleed and stuff like that. I know you're a technician at this sport, but you're also someone who can go in there with bad intentions. You want to go in there and prove that you can beat this guy up. Cyril talks about this as a sport, as an athletic competition. Do you think when it comes down to it, he just doesn't have some bad intentions in him like you can take in there? Well, I, I believe that, you know, if, if I go out there and stand in front of him and, and let him get into his rhythm, then I'm sure he would have bad intentions. I won't be lulled to sleep by him of like, oh, you know, I'm just happy to be here. It's just the sport. And, you know, life goes on if I win or lose. You know, I feel like I fight from something a little bit different. You know, there's, there's a dog inside of me. It was interesting because during the countdown, his coach was like, you know, for the Tai Chi device fight, we we focused on bringing out Cyril's dog, and I don't feel like that's something your coach has to should have to like teach you about being a dog. Either you have it or you don't. And uh, I know that I'm a dog. At the end of the day, I have that. I have a dog in me. I have a lion in me. I have I have a, a, a vicious warrior inside of me. It's who I am. And uh, losing is not an option. This is not just a sporting event to me. This is, this is my life. This is my image. This is my legacy. Um, this is me. And um, my reasons why are really big, you know. My reasons why are really big. And I, I don't know if his energy matches mine when it comes to the seriousness of how I take this, this fight in this game. So given how much tape you do watch leading up to your fights, do you agree that Cyril would just be a tougher all-around fight than Francis? I feel like Cyril is the most incomplete fighter in the top five right now. Um, he has really good striking, and he has really good footwork. Um, but I've watched his fights, you know. He got tired in his last fight against Francis Nagano. All that fancy footwork... You know, him supposedly being the fastest heavyweight that we've ever seen, all that, all that went away. One or two takedowns, making him earn, getting back up to his feet, that, that tired him out big time. I'm a wrestler, and uh, I wrestle people a lot, and it's a different type of endurance, you know. A lot of people don't like having someone on top of them and having to earn their way back up to his feet. I watched Francis and got on that last fight. Francis, in the last rounds, could barely move his feet. He could barely lift his legs. He was walking so slowly um, and gained it and destroyed Francis. You know what I mean? Um, Francis wins his fights by like first round knockout, second round knockout. Francis outworked Surreal Gang. Surreal's Gang, coach said it himself. Surreal's talented. Francis is a hard worker. Um, I beat Daniel Cormier. Um, I outworked. Daniel Cormier. Daniel's slogan is embrace the grind. Daniel Cormier outworked the shit out of Francis. But Francis, the guy who outworked serial gain, it's, it's like, since when did, has Francis become a guy who outworks others? His gift is knockout power. He got worked, outworked by Francis. That tells me a lot. That tells me a lot. Um, I watch that fight all, almost every night, and I just see Francis exhausted, laying on top of Cyril Gain, not even trying to hurt him, just being satisfied, being on top. And I saw no offense from the from the ground. We all know Cyril has nice ankle locks. Our team worked extensively on ankle lock defense, um, reversing him. I just, I just, I just don't see Cyril being able to handle a guy like me. I don't, I just can't see it. I, I respect him. I work very hard. I know I talk confidently, but I respect him so much. And um, like every opponent, I, I give it my all. I just don't see myself losing to a guy like Cyril Gain. Not getting outworked by Francis. I, I just can't imagine him outworking me and he couldn't outwork Francis. I just can't see that happening. You know, for all of us on the outside, like our big questions are right. It's like, how's John's body going to hold up at heavyweight? You know, will he still have the speed and the movement? Will he, you know, Will the strength hold up? Can the cardio go five rounds? I mean, you've been the one preparing, and do you know the answers to all those questions, or do you even you not know how it is once you get in the actual octagon? I believe I know the answers to these questions. I feel, I feel awesome. I feel awesome. I feel like I move really well. I have great pride in my endurance. I do a lot of endurance training, whether I'm on a row machine or in the pool or on the bike or sparring or heavy mitts, jiu-jitsu, jogging. Uh, I work really hard. I feel
feel great. Honestly, I feel I feel like a stronger version of myself. You know, I'm not super lean. I don't have a mean six pack like I used to. Um, that took me a while to get used to. You know what I mean? Like back in the day, I would judge like my fitness level by the way I looked in the mirror. You know, I'm a, I'm a heavyweight now. That's why my teammates said, John, you're a heavyweight now. And, 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 uh, and it's not about what you look like. It's about how you perform. And I feel like I'm performing really well. You know, I've, I've, I've had some close knockouts this camp, knocking out other people. That's something that never happened in camp in the past. Um, when I decide I want to get guys down to the ground, they go down. I have a pretty much a 100% takedown rate in my training right now. And um, I feel really good. I like it. Get to eat what I want. <clears throat> feel good, you know what I'm saying? Life is good. John, right here. Uh, you tweeted out. Right here. Uh, you tweeted out the other day. I feel officially cleared, and there will be no asterisk next to my performances anymore. Uh, I think I know what you were getting at with that. But for people who are maybe uneducated, can you elaborate? Yeah. So uh, USADA has changed some of the rules um, regarding picogram levels and, and what's allowed. And um, I've come to find out that all my all my findings were under the new legal limit, meaning that I would have been cleared from every test I've ever taken. And, um, and that means a lot to me. Um, I'm grateful to be the athlete who fought the system, who could afford the lawyers and the scientists to prove my innocence. I do believe that I, I, I don't know if it's the word carry the cross or like took the bullet for the rest of all the young athletes, but I was the first to have to go through it, and uh, people considered me a cheater. And um, now, if, if that same rule uh, would have applied back then, uh, it would have never even made the media. It would have never been a deal at all. I, my win over Daniel Cormier would not be a no contest. It would be a knockout, KO, victory. Um, so I'm hoping that with these rule changes, maybe we go back and make that no contest a win. That would mean a lot to me. I have no ill will towards USADA or, or anything like that. It was just something that we needed to go through. I was, I was the first one and one of the biggest names to go through it. And uh, I'm glad I did because some of these younger fighters wouldn't have been able to survive something like that. They would have just been cut or, or not been able to afford the lawyers or whatever. Um, so I took the bullet for this sport, for Major League Baseball, and uh, I'm glad that that fighters in the future get to avoid what I went through. It was, it was hell being considered a steroid cheat. And uh, I'm glad that, that people can see clearly now that I never was. And um, I feel set free. And John you, in the back. You mentioned, uh, just one more. Uh, you mentioned that we don't get to see much of your personal life and stuff like that. But uh, last time you were in Vegas, the Hall of Fame stuff, some of that did spill out into the public. Uh, we haven't heard you really address any of that stuff. Just want to give you the opportunity if there's anything you want to next, say about the next question. Years. Fair enough. What were you saying, Emil? John, just down here. Yep. It's What's been uh, three years since you fought, and also three years since Conor McGregor had a win. He's back this year. How do you see Conor coming back against Michael Chandler? There's only one Conor McGregor. I love Conor. I, I, I love, I love what he represents, man. He's he's big. He's big. He has a gigantic brand some sense is just as big as our sport, you know? And uh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great when he comes back. He's gonna bring a whole new energy, even more fans. It's great for all of us. It's great for the sponsors. Um, it's great for the UFC. I wish Conor all the best. I, I, love, I love the way he's living his life. I never thought in, in my time I'd see an MMA fighter with a, a Ferrari yacht, <laughs> right? <laughs> but he's done it. Lamborghini. Lamborghini, <laughs> yeah. See, you guys know. Um, and I'm so proud of him. It, it, it opens doors um, for all of us. It, it lets young fighters know that it's possible. You know, there's, there's great business outside of the sport. There's life-changing opportunity outside of the sport. And I'm just so grateful for, for, for uh, being that example for all of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah.